Vonnegut on writing on Kurt Vonnegut's response to comments made by the author, age 19. One, find a subject you care about. The first thing you think is, God, not again. Another drunk teenager has pushed her way past the entourage to tell you Cat's Cradle helped her through a really hard time in her life. <laughs> she looks up at you and you look back at her. Her, uh, her eyes reach a diameter only achievable before age 20. Her body, far as you can see through the black suede skirt and peasant blouse, is round enough in the right places and glowing with baby fat. Except for the tattoos on her wrists, she could be your wife when you first came home from war. So you say, well, it did a good job. You're a knockout. Two, do not ramble, though. She laughs. She tells you she wants to be a writer. So you say, that's good. It'll make your soul grow. You assume this to be universally true, or at least true with enough dependency to toss it off to all the 19-year-olds, knockouts or not, unfortunately earnest enough to unbutton their destinies in front of you. Three, keep it simple. You don't know she went to your grade school. You don't remember the paperback you autographed years earlier that she mailed to you in a manila envelope with a handwritten note and a poem. You've gotten more of those than most people have had sex. You gave up autographs soon after. Pens are mostly good for drawing assholes and spreading beavers anyway. Sometimes they write books, but these rarely do anybody any good. Four, have guts to cut. Fuck the humanists. If you mean soul, say soul, goddammit. Your science fiction is truer than most newspapers and textbooks. You've earned the use. Five, sound like yourself. Unfiltered cigarettes, an old-fashioned glass full of brown liquor, Einstein hair. You certainly look the part, all right. But the word knockout, as opposed to babe, or hottie, or even fox, is so charmingly anachronistic. You really are just an old fart from Indianapolis with your memories and your Paul Malls. Six, say what you mean. As humans, we're not supposed to look back. That's why God told Lot, that's what God told Lot's wife by turning her into a pillar of salt. As writers, we have to look back. When this admirer, shuddering with potential, proffers her projection at your feet, where, where, in just a few words, do you direct her? Tell her to look in the mirror. Tell her to appreciate her life down to her asshole and beaver. Tell her to look forward. Tell her to prepare to swell large enough to hold firebombs and churches and the Midwest and Saturn's moons. She'll have the rest of her life to look back. Seven, pity the readers. Don't tell her what it's like to get old. You've already told her what war's like, that truth is death. Dresden is inevitable. It happens again and again. None of us can stop it, not even with pens. You had baby fat like she does when you flew to Germany. By the time you wrote about it, you were already an old fart with his memories and his Paul Malls. Neither of you is from Chalfamador. It takes you humans forever to make any sense of time. The problem with books is they're all written by pillars of salt. There is looking forward and looking back, and everything that happens is somewhere in between. So that was my home. <laughs>